So um, it levels out at about 400. We're mostly done here. Um, by 600, uh, this suggests it's completely flat. Now in reality, when we're running reactors, um, you can be applying heat to biomass at any temperature. And being that you're doing it as a solid, um, your heat transfer rate through the solid and the time it takes are highly variable. So you end up having pyrolysis happening at all sorts of different temperatures. Okay. Okay, so that's the four processes. Drying, pyrolysis, combustion, reduction. Um, when we actually start, we're now going to go look at these in reactors and see how they get lined up. Um, they can be combined in, very, in, in a whole variety of different ways in reactors, but every um, biomass-based gasification reactor is going to have these, these four processes in some arrangement. Any questions on that first? Yes? I mean, can you, if you take a, a tree down and, it's, and then you chip it, can you use that chip right now in order you know, to do the gasification or do you have to use only the uh, material that's been dried out? No, you can. Um, that's one of the variables in the in the reactors. Yes, you can use undried material, but to a point. Um, the, the architecture of the reactor is going to determine how much water it can handle inside, um, because that's going to affect these other processes. If you get too much water coming out of drying, it's going to um, be a, a thermal load on your combustion here. So it will affect your combustion temperatures and all your tar cracking capabilities. So the moisture in the original material is one of many variables that go on in these reactors. And one of the things we've been doing with all the heat exchange things here is we're adding so much heat back into the system that we can tolerate a much higher water um, um, amount. And to the degree which you can tolerate more water and have, have adequate temps, now you get, a, you get more CO and H2 production um, through your reduction. You want to have as much water in the reactor as possible because any amount of, of CO and hydrogen generation that you can do through reduction without extra um, uh, combustion. Uh, <coughs> using steam with heat introduced somewhere else, you now get a higher energy density gas. So we get a fairly high energy density gas out of these because of all of that, that heat recovery and reintroduction. Okay? Drying, pyrolysis, combustion, reduction. These are all happening in a piece of wood that you see, that you see burning um, in a fire. Um, uh, in pyrolysis process, you don't need any oxygen, right? You, didn't, you do not need any, but you often have a little bit. Um, something has to be generating the heat for pyrolysis to work. Um, but in a pyrolysis retort, um, it's one method of making charcoal, you're taking the heat in through the vessel, and you're not having any burning inside the, the vessel. There's no oxygen. It's just heat, okay? But even then, once you start pyrolysis in motion, again, there is going to be oxygen released from the biomass. So you'll have a small amount of oxidation, even in a completely closed vessel, because the biomass is providing its own, its own oxygen. Quick question. So when, when they're talking about torrefaction, basically they're talking about pyrolysis, right? Pyro uh, torrefaction is a fancy term for low temperature pyrolysis, typically run below its um, exothermic point. Okay? Okay, so let's go on to a, a basic um, embodiment of those four processes in a reactor. Okay, the most simple um, gasifier is, uh, is uh, usually called an updraft gasifier. Um, this is a gasifier in which um, the gas is going in the opposite direction of the of the material flow. It's also called a countercurrent gasifier. Um, so imagine a vessel; it's completely sealed, top to bottom. You have material, biomass material, inside of it. You have air coming in the base and gas being pulled off the top. You can either push the air in the base or you can pull the gas off the top. Either way, it doesn't really matter. Okay? See, you, so you have this material in here. You bring in the air, apply a torch, you light this thing on fire on the bottom and start pulling the gas out the top. After this thing runs for a while, that material on the bottom is, gonna, is going to be converted to charcoal and you'll get a set of equilibrium situations set up inside the reactor. Okay? Air is coming in the bottom, and it's burning the charcoal here at the base. Okay? The air will combust um, or oxidize uh, with the charcoal, uh, forming you know, your, your products of combustion, which are CO2 and water vapor. Okay? That combustion will propagate forward through this bed to the point at which we run out of oxygen to do additional combustion. 
At the point we run out of oxygen, the reactions reverse, and we move into the reduction reactions. We still have heat. We have a tremendous amount of heat. We just moved here. It's being propagated up through the bed. Um, we, we, had, we burned here. We have propagation of the heat coming up through the bed, CO2 and water vapor. Um, and at the point we run out of air, um, the CO2 and water vapor starts to reduce the charcoal, um, running the reduction reactions that we uh, went through in the other slide. Um, now um, breaking that CO2 and water, uh, water vapor apart to CO and hydrogen. Okay. So again, um, combustion and reduction are equal and opposite reactions. If you have a fuel and you have oxygen, you'll get oxidation and release energy. At the point at which you run out of oxygen, but you have heat, charcoal, and your um, combusted gases, you will start to reverse those reactions and mine that heat back into chemical energy. Okay? This is one of the things that, say, goes on on a wood stove. Say if you get your wood stove really stoked up and it's really going, you choke the air down. Okay? What happens in that? Um, you have a big charcoal bed, you get a little bit of air that comes in the bottom, it burns, but you have this big pile of, of charcoal, and it starts running the reduction reactions, which give you CO and hydrogen, which is how wood stoves get so dangerous when they're choked. Um, if that, you then have a, a leak of those gases, you'll get CO into, into your cabin. Or if you want to flamethrower out the roof, you can do that and go light the stack on fire, because you'll have the CO and hydrogen coming off. <laughs> Okay? Either of those will work. Okay? So, our hottest temperature here, we burn, we run out of, we, we run out of oxygen, it reverses, and it starts mining that chemical, that thermal energy back to chemical energy. That proceeds until the bottom temperature where the reduction reactions work. The reduction reactions work progressively slower as things get cooler and, um, and cooler. They completely run out of ability to operate at about 520C. Um, in real process situations, you typically don't get below about 700 C, 750 C. So, as we have the flow coming up through here, we'll be mining the heat back out to chemical energy, and the reduction will start, stop at about 700 C. From that point forward, we have biomass coming down from the top, and that 700 C gas is now going to start pyrolysizing the incoming biomass. Pyrol it takes energy to heat that biomass up, it takes energy to run the pyrolysis reactions. So the, the incoming biomass is going to further mine heat out of that rising gas stream to run pyrolysis. It will continue to mine that gas or that heat down to the point at which pyrolysis ends. If you remember from the earlier chart, it ends at about 220C. Okay? So that mining of heat will continue through the pyrolysis zone, generating charcoal, um, extracting heat, to the point at which the pyrolysis stops. And from that point on, the incoming, dry, or incoming fuel will be dried, will be, will be vaporizing the water out of the fuel, drying the fuel to um, just biomass without any moisture. Okay? So, as you can see as we go through these things, we have a thermal gradient from the hottest to coolest. The zones stack up in an updraft gasifier in their thermal order. So we progressively mine things um, through the processes from ho the hottest process to the coolest process. Um, but the problem with it, as you see here, is the gas we really wanted to run an engine here was the hydrogen and carbon monoxide. We wanted the, the, the clean gas that comes off of reduction. We didn't want the tarry gases that come off of pyrolysis, and we didn't want the steam that comes off of drying. But the heat that was coming in through the gas flow here has now pulled the, those tarry gases and the steam into the flow. So when you pull the gas off the top of a, an updraft gasifier, you get all of the tar and all of the steam from your, um, from your reactions here. It comes out in your gas, which is why updraft gasifiers are known as particularly um, um, dirty gasifiers um, and aren't typically used for, for small-scale engine operations. Okay. Now, we actually, surprisingly, have a lot of updraft gasifiers in the world. Um, we don't call them as such, but they have a globally installed base. They're nearly free. Um, probably about half of humanity is addicted to them, actually. 
They're called cigarettes. Um, a cigarette is actually a, an updraft gasifier. Uh, it's a, a co-current gasifier. Once you start, start a, a cigarette burning, you got a little glowing ember on the end there. That's your charcoal burner. You suck in air, um, combust some charcoal at the end. The combustion propagates inward to the point at which you run out of oxygen. Now, now you have a glowing hot charcoal bed, CO2 and water vapor from that combustion. So it reverses, you move into the reduction reactions, and you start, you start converting that thermal energy back into chemical energy over your char bed. So then you get, you'll have um, carbon monoxide and hydrogen. Carbon monoxide is why you get a headache when you smoke a cigarette. A cigarette's actually a, it's a fairly efficient gas fire. But it's, produces about 5 to 7% CO. Uh, it's amazing it don't kill us. Uh, but, then, but then beyond there is the real, the real problem. It's not the CO, it's less the problem than the tar. So after the, so after the reduction reactions, you now have uh, raw biomass. So you'll get your pyrolysis zone set up as you're moving towards your mouth. And then to the degree to which you have any moisture from humidity, you have some drying to, to happen in that biomass, which is really critical, otherwise the, the, the um, the gas coming into your mouth would be impossibly hot to, to actually suck on. But because you mine all of that heat from the combustion, through pyrolysis and drying, you actually get a, a smoke that has a flavor and it's cool enough um, that, you can, that you can stand it, okay? Um, problem is that generates a lot of tar, too, which is why we get into all of the problems of tar in cigarettes um, and, and our, our filtration on them and the various attempts to genetically engineer tobacco to have them make less tar. You can, in fact, do that by changing the fixed carbon to volatile ratio in the, in the, um, the, the original tobacco, okay? So, um, this guy's gonna have a big headache. <laughs> okay, so that is what the inside of the, the cigarette looks like. That's where your mouth would be, or right there. <laughs> So at some point we should get a little cigarette in a pump and we pump it out and you can see you could light it on fire. The problem is you can't like put it in your mouth and blow it out and light it on fire because your, your hemoglobin is really reactive with the CO. So you lose about half um, of your, your flammable gases when you suck it into your mouth. Um, so you probably get most of the hydrogen back out, but I don't, I don't even know how bioavailable that is. That might get taken up too. Okay. The CO certainly gets taken up. Okay, so this guy's gonna fall over. Um, that's what I'm okay, so again, the problem in the, in the updraft gasifier is you're getting your, your, um, your tar gases and your steam into your out, outgoing gas. So the typical solution for that is what's called a downdraft gasifier, which reverses or moves around some of the zones here such that you're pulling the gas off right at, after the reduction zone. Okay, in a downdraft gasifier, which we often call an ember gasifier, though there's many types of them. There's a, an enclosed vessel here. Um, again, we have a specific point that we're controlling the air coming in, and a specific point that we're taking the gas out. Okay? Um, to get these going, we usually pre-fill them with charcoal, put the whole base in charcoal, and then we fill biomass on the top. If we then force air in, or pull gas out, the air will come in here and set up combustion in this area, that combustion will propagate forward until it runs out of the oxygen, then reverse, go into the reduction reactions, try and transform that thermal energy into chemical energy. So we get our CO2, excuse me, our CO, carbon monoxide and hydrogen, coming off right here. And you see that doesn't go back through pyrolysis or drying. Um, and so that's, that has the potential to be clean gas. And then you locate your pyrolysis and drying above combustion, okay? The heat to run these is now radiant energy that's coming up out of the combustion zone, as well as some convective flow that kind of passively sets up in here. But instead of having the gas pass through the raw biomass to run pyrolysis, we're just having this kind of passive movement of heat upwards from the combustion zone. Okay? So as the material moves down, you'll have a heating continuum from you know, fully raw and wet through dried through progressively charcoal and moving into the combustion temperatures.